ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ولم يضل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله الحمد لله praise be to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the opportunity to see the last friday of this blessed month of ramadan every day is a blessed day but these last 10 days are very exclusive for the ummah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam with all its merits traditionally our scholars and our ulama they were always worried about something different than the general ummah were concerned with most of us we are worried about how we can get closer to allah this is our general and it should be how to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how to do good things and how to move on the ladder of spirituality. But they had a fear. And their fear was how we can protect ourselves from falling from the ladder. How we can protect ourselves from losing the rewards. How we can protect ourselves from going bankrupt. Because on this path, you could actually fall really bad if you're not careful. So this is the way of the ulama that they were always worried about it, how to protect themselves from falling. Abu Hayyan, there's a beautiful uh, scholar, this is in uh, Risalat al-Imam Ghushayri, he mentions this uh, about Abu Uthman al-Hayyari, who wrote a letter to Abu Abdullah Muhammad ibn Fadl al-Balkhi. And uh, Abu Uthman al a great scholar himself, but this is shows the humility of them when they write letters and ask questions because it's just through humility is, is one of the greatest doors of learning. One of the greatest doors of learning is humility. And this is why if you look at the Sahaba amongst when they were around the Prophet wasallam, when the Prophet asked the Sahaba question, what was the response? And some of the questions that are in the ahadith, you read it, we know the answer, and we barely have any knowledge of Islam. You think they didn't know? You think Ali, karamullahu wajhu, the, the man of hikmah, wisdom, doesn't know the answer? You think Abu Bakr said they didn't know the answer? They all, most of them, they knew the answer. But what did they say? Allah Rasulullah Ala. Just the humility. Allah and His Messenger knows best. Right? That humility opened the doors of knowledge. And that's why that community, the first community, are, they are the exemplary community of knowledge. So he said in his letter to him, he said, Oh, Sheikh, I have a question for you. Can you give me the alamat, the signs of shiqawa, of wretchedness? He wanted to protect himself from becoming a wretched person. He didn't want to fall and go into that state. This is the worry of him. I don't want to become a wretched a wretched person. This is why Sayyidina Omar, he was asking, tell me, do you see nifaq in me? Am I a munafiq? Omar ibn Khattab is asking, Am I, do you see any signs of nifaq in me? So I can rectify myself, right? This is the worry of the, the ulama. He writes back to him, he said, there are signs of wretchedness. And there are three signs that if you have these, and if Allah afflicted you with that, then you are not a righteous person. You're a wretched person. So he says, what's the first one is that these are the people, he said, that Allah has given them knowledge, but didn't give them tawfiq to put those knowledge into action. They have the knowledge, but they haven't, they were bad from doing that, putting that into action. Knowledge without action. In our religion, the highest level is to actually know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the highest level. If you look at the verse of the Quran where Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ We have not created the jinn and the human being except to worship us. Ibn Abbas said, إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ means إِلَّا لِيَعْرِفُونَ It means in order for you to have ma'rifah of Allah, to know Allah. In other words, Worship is through knowledge. You have to know in order to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can't worship out of ignorance. 
And this is why our religion, the foundation of our deen is knowledge. What does the Quran begin? The first revelation. Allah tells us, His Prophet, Iqra, read. Bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. In the name of your Lord who has created you. Look at this first seven verses that was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Khalaq al insana min alaq. He's teaching him now. Where do you come from? The source of human being from alaq. Iqra, read. Wa rabbuka al akram. Then he's showing who is your Lord. Who is your Lord? It's Allah subhanahu wa taala. He is kareem. Allah is generous, right? Ya ayyuhal, ya ayyuhal insan, ma gharraka bi rabbika al-kareem. O oh, human being, what has deluded you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a Lord that is so generous? The ulama say the answer is already in the verse. What has deluded you from His generosity? A Lord that is so generous. It's His generosity that has deluded us. The generosity of Allah has deluded us from Him, from seeing his, who He is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. الَّذِي عَلَّمَ بِالْقَلَمِ He taught you how to use the pen, the, the, the writing, the tools of knowledge. It's all about knowledge. It's all about knowledge. And then the Quran says, أَلَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمِ دَرَجَاتِ Allah has given those people that He has given knowledge, they raise them in a degree, they have a daraja. هَلْ يَسْتَوِيَ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ it's a, it's a Quranic question. This is what they call rhetoric question when there's no answer to it because it's so wadih, it's so clear. It's clear. Are those the same? Those that we have given them knowledge and those that don't have knowledge? No, of course they're not. Allah doesn't even answer it. Because, The Quran in other place says, those who are blind and those who can see, they are not the same. They're not the same. Those who've been given knowledge and those who don't have knowledge, they're not the same. But knowledge is the foundation of this religion because through knowledge, you learn how to worship your Lord. You learn who you are. You learn where you came from. You learn where you're at. And fa'ayna tadhabun. You get the answer to this Quranic question. Where then are you going? And that is the great question that every human being must come face to face with it. Where then are you? Where do you think you're going? Where do you think every all of cosmos? Why is it that everything is going in circle in the cosmos and everything is moving towards a destination? Where are they going? Everybody is going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every one of us will stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the knowledge of the, the foundation of the deen is knowledge. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. فَضَلُ الْعَالِمَ لَلْعَابِدْ كَفَضَلُ الْقَمَرِ عَلَى سَعِرِ الْكَوَاكِبِ The preference of an alim over an abid, a regular worshipper, is like the preference of the moon over the stars. And our shaykh said, both moon and the stars, they get their light from the sun. But the moon gives out the light back to the earth, so you can see your path in the darkness of the night. Right? It illuminates the way for you. This is the nature of the moon. There's the nature of the scholars. Khaj Abdullah Ansari, the great sage of Herat said, he said, Alim bi amal, misla kura charaq badastas. An alim who doesn't have action is like a blind man with a flashlight in his hand. He, has, he doesn't benefit. But here's the secret of this, this beautiful statement. He doesn't benefit from it, but other people can benefit. You can benefit. There are people who say, oh, I don't want to study with so-and-so. Right? Because he has ilm, but he doesn't have amal. amal. He doesn't have action. Our shaykh told us, go get the ilm from him, and you put it to action. Go grab it from him. He's just a carrier. He's not worthy of it. Right? So, the action, the sahaba were more concerned about the acceptance of their action than the action itself. Would this be accepted? Right? This is, this is amal for the knowledge that Allah has given us. This is, this is extremely important that when we learn something, we practice it. Everything that we learn, we practice it. When we teach our children something, we let them practice that thing until they get to the level of perfection, inshallah ta'ala. So, the second thing for the sake of time, he said the second thing uh, that out of the three, he said the one who has been given action 
but he hasn't been given sincerity in his action. Ikhlas. What is ikhlas? What is ikhlas? Ikhlas is to do an action and you don't want anyone to see you. That's ikhlas. You actually don't want anyone to see you doing a good action because it's sincerely and fully for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can't have a mixed action. You can't. You can't have action that's, oh, I'm doing for the sake of Allah, I'm doing for my nafs and I'm doing for this. No, it's either for your nafs or for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sayyidina Ali, uh, there's a story in the Masnavi of Rumi, Sayyidina Ali was in a battle. And he, uh, he came face to face with a, with, a, with a pagan. And Sayyidina Ali defeated him. And, you know, Sun Tzu in the art of war says that the, the, the greatest moment for the warrior is when he gets to that level. This is what they call, in, in the traditional uh, sciences, they call sa'ada, happiness. Happiness is when you reach your goal. For a mountain climber, happiness is when he reached that top of the mountain that he always wanted to. For the one who loves medicine, as happiness is when they become the doctor, because they always wanted to become a doctor, right? For a warrior, the happiness in that moment, you defeated the enemy. This is it. You, you are at the pinnacle. This is the adrenaline rush in you. And then he, the man, when he defeats him, he wants to kill him, and then the man spits, spits in his face, in the face of Sayyidina Ali. And Mawlana says, he, uh, they say this is the greatest praise of Ali in all of literature, right? He says, he spat in the face that every wali and every prophet loves this face, the face of Ali. That's the face that he spat in. But Ali, karam Allah, why you stop fighting? He said, I'm not going to fight you. And he tied him up. And the man said, why did you stop? You were supposed to kill me. And then you stop. I spat in your face. Suppose, I mean, I, I, I made it worse. He said, oh, yes, you did. He said, When you spat my face, you shook my nafs. I wanted to really kill you for my nafs, for myself. Before that, it was for Allah. I was fighting for the sake of God. But now I'm fighting for my sake. I wanted, I wanted to really, I wanted to really hurt you. Because you spat in my face. You shook my nerves, right? And then he said, Neem He said, half of me was for God, the other half was for my hawa, for my passion, for my desire, for my nafs. You can't do a work half for God, half for for nafs. So I let you go. And this man said, who are you and what is your school? Who is your mudarris? Who teaches you? These, this, who taught you this? He said, this is taught by my prophet in my Quran. And he said, I want to be like you. I don't care what your religion you're in. I want to be like you, Ali. This is the greatest da'wah. When people come to you and they say, I want to be like you. I don't care what is your religion. Tell me your religion, I want to become like you. They don't know what you are because you are a man of akhlaq and all your action is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-ikhlas sirrun min asrari istawda'tu qalbin man ahbabtu min ibadi. This hadith is da'if, but this is for wa'ad. It's da'if. Ibn Hazm said it's, it's da'if. Al-Aini said it's da'if. But alhamdulillah, even Daif hadith, you don't throw it away. He said, this hadith is Qudsi. That's Allah says, Jibreel, Ali, Allah, somebody asked the Prophet Sallallahu what is ikhlas? The Prophet Sallallahu asked Jibreel, what is ikhlas? What is ikhlas? He's the teacher, right? Everybody has a teacher. Even though his rank of the Prophet Sallallahu is higher, but he's the teacher. And the, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, what does my beloved want? What is he asking? This is asking about ikhlas. And then Allah tells him this. That ikhlas is a sir, is a secret from my mysteries that I put in the hearts of those servants that I love. Whoever is, has ikhlas and sincere, those are the people that Allah loves. And he says, Allah says, I don't even let the angels write it. And I don't let shaitan know it. So they don't corrupt it. Or they don't, they, I don't want anyone to know about this. This is a secret between me and my servant. This is ikhlas, this is sincerity. The action 
are supposed to be for the sake of Allah. And what makes an action beautiful? What makes an action with ikhlas? Is your intention. And this is why almost every book of hadith starts with innama al-a'mal bin niyad wa innama. So the Imam Nawawi uh, in, in the Arba'in, uh, in Bukhari, all of the hadith book, except maybe one or two. It starts with this book, with this hadith. That your actions are by your intention. And everybody gets what they intend. Right? And then from hijratuhu ilallahi wa rasuli. Whoever whoever make migration for the sake of Allah, they make migration for the sake of Allah. Why did why did the Prophet use that metaphor? Why did he say why did he say something else? Why does he whoever make jihad for the sake of Allah? Why is he hijra? Because it was a man who made hijra for a woman to Medina. He, he was it wasn't for Allah. He wanted to get married there. He said, oh, whoever marries for other than, uh, make hijrah for other than that, they made hijrah for whatever cause they have made, made hijrah for. So your intention has to be pure. So the last one, he said, he said that there, for those people of wretchedness or the one who has been given companionship of righteous people and they don't have respect for them. They have been given companionship of the righteous people, but they don't have respect for those people. Companionship is risk. Companionship is risk. Our tradition of spirituality, the shuk sitting here, so I shouldn't be talking about spirituality. Our tradition of spirituality is based on suhba. That's it. It's suhba. It's companionship. The Prophet didn't have followers. Now everybody has followers, right? How many people follow you on Twitter? How many follow people follow me on this and that? They have followers. That's not our tradition, I'm sorry. Our tradition is companionship. The Prophet ﷺ didn't have followers. He had sahaba, they were companions. And they benefited from the suhba of each other. And great, the greatest suhba was the, being in the company of the Prophet ﷺ. So he's saying that you, if you've been given companionship of righteous people, you have to honor that. You have to be grateful to that. You have to honor your teachers. You have to honor the people of knowledge. If you are grateful to whatever Allah has given you, Allah will give you more. It's the nature of Allah. He will give you more. But if you're not, He will take it away. You will lose it. You will lose it. So, uh, in the Insan al Kamil, this incredible book, uh, Azizuddin Nasafi wrote, he said that all your studies, everything that you do in your life, all the knowledge that you learn, from sarf and nahu, from grammar to mathematics to Quran to hadith, whatever you learn, all of it is to prepare you for the companionship. That's all. To qualify you who is going to be you, the person that you're going to keep the company of. So companionship is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's rizq, it's your sustenance. So appreciate it if Allah has given you good company. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidil Mursaleen wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in bi rahmatika ya arhamur rahimeen Imam Ghazali rahmatullah alayhi said Al-ilm bila amal junoon wal-amal bi ghayri ilm la yukum Knowledge without action is insanity an action without knowledge is a vanity. It's not possible. Most people, they don't think about just their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There was a game we used to play when we were kids called Shoots and Ladders. Some people might have played it. And you just roll and then you go up and up. You're supposed to get to the top of the board and just keep going. And then you get on the ladder, you go up. And then there was the places where you just, if you get on that, and then you, whoosh, you shoot down back. Sometimes all the way at the bottom. And getting down on the bottom, it's like that. You can really lose it. All of these teachings, you can lose it if you are not vigilant. And this is why it's important to know what really makes us wretched, what makes us successful. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we all know the success stories of the dunya. We study, we go to college, we learn how to become successful, how to have a successful company. How, all, but what about the success of the heart? What about the success 
what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the advice that the, the, our Shaykh al-Balqi gives is first, if you've been given knowledge, practice it. Even if you know anything, even if you know one, بَلِّغُ أَنِّي وَلَوْ آيَةً Prophet said, teach even if you know one verse. If you learn how to make wudu properly, teach somebody. And then practice it. And every day, make that wudu the way you learned it. Right? The way you learned it. If you learned salah properly, pray like you learned it. Just put those in action. And then the second is to have sincerity in your action. Ikhlas. Make sure it's for the sake of Allah. Make sure people, you're not about people seeing you. And we'll end with a story from the great Sa'adi Shirazi, who uh, a man went to the king for a, for a dinner. And then he went, he was a, he was a scholar. This is, this, this is the type of scholar we're talking about. And he went and, and he came back home and he told his, uh, his wife and kid, his son asked him, he said, oh, Baba, how was, how was dinner at the king's? And I was like, yeah, yeah, we, we were there. We, I laid, alhamdulillah, the jama'ah and the prayer and the king was behind me. Incredible. How was the food? Oh, food, food uh, must have been really good. I, I, I barely eat anything. Wife, can you make some food? I'm really starving. My wife is like, you came from the king's dinner and you're starving? He said, oh, I was in front of the king. Just said a little bit, you know, just to, I don't want to overeat, obviously, in front of the king. And so his son says, Baba, why don't you repeat your Maghrib prayer as well? Why don't you repeat your Maghrib prayer as well? Because the way you ate for the king, I'm sure your prayer was like that for the king as well. It wasn't for Allah. So you have to be very careful. There's subtleties. Subtleties in this deen. And you can lose actions. Lose action. One of the ulama said, what the ummah of the Prophet ﷺ is most deprived of is intention for all the action they do. He said, every day we lose tons of rewards. For example, when you eat, we don't make intentions. I intend to eat so I can have the strength, so I can pray. Be. I intend to eat so I can be healthy because Allah says, you know, keep good health. The Prophet ﷺ reminded us, keep good health, right? I eat so I can go and exercise, so I can keep my body in check. I, so you can make multiple intentions. I wear clothes so I can cover my nakedness. This is a Dean Thomas. You get a reward for that. You get a reward for covering. You get a reward. I wear clothes so I don't get harmed. I don't want to harm my body. Right? All of these, everything that you do, you can make intention for it. And you can get multiple rewards. And that's a practice that you can start. And it will become habitual, these practices. These are the practices that become habitual when you make intention for these things, inshallah. In Alhamdulillah, may Allah make us from amongst the people that we are amongst the salihin, amongst the righteous, and we are not amongst the wretched people. May Allah protect us from uh, knowledge that doesn't have action, from action that doesn't have sincerity, and from the suhbah that we are not grateful. May Allah give us the ability to serve, to serve this deen in the best way, in the way that we are most qualified. And may Allah protect us, protect our families and our children and our offspring until the Yawm Al-Qiyamah from the fitna and the facades of our time. May Allah bring ease to the Muslim all around the globe, especially to our brothers and our sisters in Gaza. Allahumma yassir wa la ta'asir. Ya Allah, make the affairs of life easy and not hard. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman Rahimeen. May Allah descend His mercy in Palestine. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, they've been suffering for too long. Ya Rahman Rahimeen. Ya Allah, make it easy for them and take the shuhada in this month that they've gone, given the highest rank of Jannah. Ya Rahman Rahimeen the highest rank of Jannah, and make them all witnesses, Ya Allah. People are coming to Islam from the martyrs of, of, of Gaza. Ya Allah, for every person that's leaving, thousands of people are coming to Islam. And what, a, what an incredible testimony to the shahada of our brothers and sisters there, uh, and to the patience of our brothers and sisters there. We in here, we look at it, and, and you look at these movie, films in this, that from the mothers, that you, just, you just weep that the connection that they have with Allah, may Allah give us that kind of connection. That kind of connection, that any calamity that comes, they say, it's from my beloved. It's from Allah. It's from Allah. And they cause their hearts are connected to Allah. And may Allah make it easy and give them prosperity in Palestine. Ya Allah, ya Rahman, Rahimin. In all over the Muslim world, in Darfur, Ya Allah, in Afghanistan, people are suffering all over the Muslim world. In Kashmir, Ya Allah, Allahumma yassir wa la tu'asir. May Allah bring peace, peace on earth. 
Wallahi, may Allah bring peace to, the, to all the children. No child should suffer, regardless of their religion, of their race. They're all in fitra, inshallah. Inna alhamdulillahi na'hamadu wa nasta'inu wa nasta'gfiru wa na'audhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina man yahdi Allah fala mudalla lah wa man yudlil fala hadi ya lah wa ashadu an la ilahi illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu arsaluhu bilhuda bashiran wa nadhinan qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi Qur'an majid inna Allah malaikatu yusalluna ala nabiyya ayuhu al-ladhina amanu sallu alihi wa sallimu taslima Ya ayuhu al-ladhina amanu taqullaha haqqa tuqati wa la tumutunna illa wa antum muslimun Ya ayuhu al-ladhina amanu taqullaha wa qulu qawlan sadida Yuslih lakum a'amalakum wa yaqfir lakum dhunubakum wa maniyati Allah wa rasulahu faqad fa'azda fawzan Azeema wa qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Arhamu ummati wa ummati abi bakar wa ashaddum fi amri illahi umar wa asdaghum hayan uthman wa aqdahum aliyan wa fatam al-sayyidu tunisa ahl al-janna wa hamza asadullahi wa asadur rasuli khayla al-quruni qarni thumma al-ladhini yalunahum thumma al-ladhini yalunahum inna allahi amru bil-adli wal-ihsan wa yitaid al-qurba wa yanha an al-fahshari wa al-munkar wa al-baqi yadhukum la'alukum tadakkurun fa adhkuru li adhkurkum wa ashkuru li wa la takfurun wa dhikru allahi akbar wa aqimu s-salaa